As the economy improves, we're bringing more and more good bases back into our shop from makers, really mainly makers that we did business with before, but just really couldn't afford to stock their products in the past couple of years. This is an example of a base like that, and we want to bring to your attention, again, Bjorn Stoll. Wonderful maker. His father was uh, one of the guys who worked with Rubner when Rubner was making wonderful handmade bases, uh, probably at least 10 years ago and more. And then um, Bjorn Stoll, we worked with on new models of ours, and also he's worked on new models of his own, especially the uh, Dresden model base is something that he developed. Um, we're taking the time to document this instrument here. This is a five-string gamba bass that's come in and is actually on its way to South America kind of right away, but it's such a great bass we want to show it to you. So let's uh, start up at the top and take a look if that's, uh, if you can get there in time. Um, I love these tuning machines, I got to tell you. The, um, you know, French-style uh, tuners leave lots of wood. That's always very attractive. But these keys, these are ebony. Uh, those are nice. And, uh, and then they have a little brass button on the back. It's just so sweet. Um, very well-selected wood. I see arcade grain patterns here on the back of the neck, and that tells me that the grain is just absolutely flat coming down here. And uh, I can see it down the neck. I'd be surprised if any of this is more than five degrees off of uh, this level that I, I, that I look for. And then uh, nicely flamed. This is the quality of uh, flamed wood in this case that we got with, um, with a, this is not his cheapest model, but uh, a middle model. And then, um, as always, you, um, in Germany you see wood that is properly cut from the tree, and if you're able to see these, the ray flecking, which is actually very prominent in, right in this area, that's just an indication that the vertical grain is perfect. The, the uh, spacing on the uh, grain lines on the spruce is kind of wide. But uh, the bass sounds really good, and uh, you'll get a chance to hear Chris playing some Arco on it. And then the other thing that we've heard uh, from people that have walked in to see the bass, and, you know, they spot it and want to try out a five-string in this case, and, and also our own um, uh, people that, you know, musicians that work here, is that this five-string bass is so easy to play. The dimensions of the neck just don't feel really large. And I would like to add to that that we have put a lot of design kind of thinking into what makes a good five-string setup. And this uh, particular bass is a real, a real example. However, I also just want to go back and generalize. Um, there are other models available from Stoll. The Tosca model, which we have not had here for a couple of years probably, is wonderful. And so is, um, what, I mentioned Dresden is a base that uh, is quite expensive, but uh, people that buy them think that uh, they got a great deal. And uh, then uh, this Heidelberg model is available in four strings as well, certainly. Okay, take a listen and see what you think when Chris plays it. Thanks. I will begin my demonstration of this five string stole with some long tones and a scale, followed by an orchestral excerpt and a short solo piece.
we're supposed to hit the body. No. And on top, the G, when you play the G, same deal. <laughs> That's a good yeah. bass. Usually when I'm playing on the five strings, it, it yeah, it, the the B throws me off. Maybe it's the, the spacing between the between the strings, the setup, the dimensions of the bass, but I it's really easy to play. <laughs> 